As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. He spat on the ground and made clay with saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said it is, but others said, no, he just looks like him. He said, I am. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. When the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see, he said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed them and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. And so they said to the blind man again, what do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet. They answered and said to him, you were born totally in sin and you're trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, do you believe in the son of man? He answered and said, who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, you have seen him. The one speaking to you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshiped him. Hello and welcome to Closer Walk Catholic Communications. I'm Father Bayer, your host, and we're glad that you can join us. Who do you think you are? You're steeped in sin, and you're trying to teach us the nerve. And they threw him out. Boy, tell me what's wrong with this picture. First of all, is some form of affliction, a blindness, debt, whatever, is that the way God deals with people? Is that the way, well, okay, well, you are a, a bad teenager, so your child is going to be born with this affliction, that affliction? Come on. Come on. First of all, it's a misunderstanding of who in God is. Justice belongs to God. But being vengeful is not who God is. And I think it's very, very important. And I've, you know, I've, I've, I've dealt with this before. I've dealt with it very literally. You know, I had a couple who, when they were dating, she got pregnant. And they were stupid. They were young. They had an abortion. Wrong. Every stretch of the imagination, wrong not the way to deal with it. But then later in life, they had a child born with multiple deformities. And she beat herself up for years thinking that this was payback and payback was hell. And God inflicted this upon them because of her, her past sins. As it turns out, the little child with the multiple deformities absolutely saved the mother and the father's soul. Her witness, her life, her simplicity absolutely transformed the lives. They came to love and cherish this child. And the child saved their lives. I had a situation and a lady comes to me and said, there's a baby 
in a hospital in Atlanta and the baby's got X, Y, and Z problems. And the parents walked out and said, you keep them, we don't want them. They had nobody to adopt this baby with these multiple deformities. And at the time, this was a single mother. And she said, I can't. She said, I can't leave that baby there. Somebody's got to love that baby. Well, she went as a single mother and adopted this baby. And life goes on and uh, it's a cognitive thing with the baby and, you know, doesn't hear, walks, talks, but can't understand all, all that. You know, life and life's drama. But anyway, life goes on. She's taking care of the baby. The baby's precious. The baby was in the cry room one day, running back and forth in the middle of mass, and I'm saying mass, and here's this little boy with his Snoopy toy running around and, you know, got deformities and everything, but happy, 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 got to me. I mean, I almost stopped mass just to cry because it was, you know, this was, according to the parents, what you throw in the trash heap, okay? A deformed baby. One thing and another, thing, life goes on, different family complications, and someone sets the mother's trailer on fire right underneath her bedroom. The little boy, the deformed little boy, smells smoke and got up and was beating on his mother and she realized the trailer was on fire. And she grabs a baby and she runs out. And the trailer burns to the ground. She saved the baby. And the baby saved her. Please understand that everything, everything that happens under God's son is meant to offer us a lesson, a gift, an opportunity that we've not yet understood and we don't quite know why, but we continue to love and God brings all things to completion. And I have two favorite passages in scripture. This is not one of them, but it fits into what I want to say about it. The first passage is the passage it says, you know, the, the ten lepers approach Jesus and go show yourself to the priest. They were cured. The one, a Samaritan, comes back and falls on his knees to praise God. And God asks the question, where are the other nine? Weren't all ten made whole? That's probably my favorite. But the second favorite is this. When, which one of you fathers, if his son ask for a fish, would hand him a scorpion, or ask for a loaf of bread, would hand him a snake. And then he says, if you, with all of your sins, know how to give good things to your own, how much more does the Father in heaven have in store for you? And if we, with all of our sins, would never, ever, do anything to hurt our own, our loved one. Why in God's name would you think that God has done something just to punish us? You were born in sin. You're blind. You're a beggar. That's punishment for your parents for whatever they may have done. That's not God. And every situation that God gives us is an opportunity to learn. My very first time of taking an airline flight was back in the 60s. I went to a CYO convention in Denver, Colorado. And the guest speaker, the keynote speaker, 
was a, uh, was a man by the name of Bart Linkletter. And I know I'm dating myself here. If you're under, if you're under 60, you probably don't know who I'm talking about. But Art, Art, Art Linkletter used to have a show called House Party. And in it, he had little children come up and sit in a chair on the stage and he would ask them questions. And this segment was called Kids Say the Darndest Things, okay? Anyway, he was, he was very popular among kids because after that little session, he gave the kids all kind of toys and bicycles and stuff like that, all right? But Art Linkletter came and he had five children and his fifth one was born with a form of retardation. He and his wife had suffered greatly. One of his children got into drugs and had a flashback and jumped out of a window on a bad acid trip and killed himself. But then he started talking about his special Ed child. And he said, when it first happened, we thought God had punished us. But now I know why we refer to them as special. And he went on to talk about these children as being this great example of unrequited love and how loving and how wonderful and how special this little boy was and how much joy he had brought into their lives. But when it initially happened, they thought to themselves after having four quote, healthy children, what do we do wrong? Why is God giving us a child like this? And I think that question that Art Linkletter asked of why is God doing this, he never got the answer. The question he should have been asked is, what does God want us to learn from this situation? What has God given us in this special child it's going to make us understand what pure love is all about, what pure devotion is all about. What is God teaching us with that? And rather than seeing God because of the incidents or the accidents of our lives and asking why, today's gospel is what? What is God teaching us when in the Old Testament they thought, because this man was born blind and he was a beggar, it was some form of punishment. It was not that at all. It was a way for God to reveal his glory and to reveal his power in his life. And so when we get into these situations that we don't understand why it's happened, why I have to live like this, why I'm in a wheelchair, why I, whatever, it's an opportunity to understand the power and the grace of God. And that's what we're called to look for. And when people come and they've, they've had that, whatever it is, you know, why is it that I'm, I'm like this? I buried an altar boy from my first mass and I buried him before he was 50 years old. And he had this, this wheelchair disease that ended up putting him in, in a wheelchair at the age of 50. He came to me as a very kind of distorted guy. He ended up dying a very holy man. God gave him the wheelchair so he could find God and be with him in death. Stay with us, we'll be back in a moment. Hi, I'm Father Jeff Bay from Closer Walk Catholic Communications. Thank you for being here today. And a special thanks for the support that you give us. First of all, your prayerful support we so desperately need, and also your financial support. We are donor-driven, and that would, is what keeps us on the air today. As you well know, the truth is in great demand and in very short supply, and mainstream media is not going to bring you the truth of the Gospels of our Lord Jesus Christ because that's not socially acceptable and it's not politically correct. Certainly, we all realize that when this life journey's over, we don't stand before the Supreme Court, we stand before the throne of God. Therefore, with great clarity and great charity, 
to pronounce the truth of the gospel is important. Your prayers, your financial support enables us to do that. So we thank you and may God bring you closer in your walk with the Lord each day. God bless you. Now they brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made the clay and opened his eyes on the Sabbath. So the Pharisees asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and now I can see. Some of the Pharisees says, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can such a sinful man do such signs? Hello and welcome back to Close to Walk Catholic Communications. I'm Father Byer, your host, and we're glad that you can join us. You know, I've never been able to get God's cell number. I love all these people who say God speaks to them. And I think that's good. I mean, I, God puts things in my heart and my mind. And, you know, and I, I'm, I'm convinced of it. But you know what God has never done? God has never told me that he wants me to go judge somebody else. Told me he wants him to love him. Told me he wants him to understand him. Told me he wants me to be compassionate and kind to him. But God has never told me to go judge somebody else. We have a lot of that. We have a lot of hypocrisy that we live with. We have a lot of people professing relationships with God and believing that it was their relationship with God precisely that allowed them to ignore God's law and to change God's law. We're all very, very aware that now, traditional Catholics are seen as part of a hate group and being compared to the Ku Klux Klan. And if these idiots had any knowledge of the past, you got to realize the Ku Klux Klan was originally formed to silent blacks, Jews, and Catholics. We were the hate group. We were the group they hated. I know it very well growing up in the South and going to a seminary in the South where the Ku Klux Klan was very active. And in college, the Ku Klux Klan used to come to the seminary at night blowing their horns, drinking, and shooting up the buildings. And we knew that. And we knew that we had to take cover. No one ever got shot. They did grab a couple people and hurt them and burn them. But I know the Ku Klux Klan were. And Catholics are people that they hated. But we're now being associated with the Ku Klux Klan because of ignorance and because there are people who prefer the law of God to the law of the land. And it's great hypocrisy. It's so-called movie stars making statements like, I never really had a relationship with God until I had my first abortion. And then 
I found God through my abortion. Oh, wonderful. We have a so-called Catholic president who talks about having his rosary in his pocket and he brags about his Catholic faith and no one in the history of this country has declared war on the unborn like they have. What hypocrisy. We had a Speaker of the House who made the statement, it's because of her Catholic faith she wants to ensure everyone's right to have an abortion because she believes in individual rights coming from God. Well, everyone has the possibility to sin. Make no mistake about it. And since the fall of Adam and Eve, good and evil exist in the world. And everyone, everyone has the ability to become sinners. I have the right or the ability to get a gun and go kill somebody I don't like doesn't mean they need to legalize it because that's a choice that I have. And the great hypocrisy that exists because people choose the law of God over a new so-called enlightened society. And now we're being called a hate group. It's the same hypocrisy. Here's a man been blind all of his life. God heals him on the Sabbath. And what do they do? They condemn him for healing him on the Sabbath. They don't rejoice that a man who was once blind can now see. They choose to condemn him for healing him on the Sabbath. And we as Catholics have been bashed a lot. And we've got this terrible, terrible, unspeakable recent history of child abuse. There's no excuse for it. There's no reason to cover it up. And no one ought to be free from the law that protects children, whoever they are. But at the same time, You tell me any organization throughout the entire world that houses more homeless people than the Roman Catholic Church. You tell me any organization in the whole entire world that feeds more hungry people, including the U.S. government, than the Roman Catholic Church. You tell me what organization has more hospitals to take care of the sick and the indigent, including all of our so-called charity institutions, than the Roman Catholic Church. You tell me who's educated more people throughout the world, and in particular, educated women in societies where women were seen as property and not as equals and couldn't even drive and couldn't even go without their face covered, but they were educated by the church because they were not property. They were made in the image and likeness of God. And to say that we're not pro-women is a travesty but it's the great hypocrisy. It's the great pharisaical approach to things that people latch onto and they vilify. Since the Dobbs decision, and let me be very clear, 
people think the Dobbs decision outlawed abortion. The decision gave each state the right to choose. That's what it did. But since then, 173 Catholic churches have been vandalized and attacked. The Blessed Mother has had red paint thrown over her womb area, you know, to symbolize whoever Jane's revenge is or whatever. I got news for you. I hate the fact that our churches have been vandalized, but if they think we're the Catholics or the ones who uphold God's law, then I take those attacks as a badge of courage. I think that in our current situation, rather than looking for the vandals who are desecrating churches, we've taken to arresting and trying to prosecute people who pray outside of abortion clinics. We've even arrested an 87-year-old concentration camp survivor who knows what mass genocide is all about. She's been arrested for praying outside of an abortion clinic, and there have only been two people arrested in the 173 churches that have been vandalized since Dobbs. You think we have a little pharisaical idea in this country, and coming from within our own church, we have some people who want to change the laws, who wants societal norms to supersede the law of God. And we need to continue to pray. We first of all need to remain vigilant and we need to remain proud of who we are and what we stand for. We continually need to try to rid the church of the sinfulness that does exist within and without. But we need never apologize for being faithful to the law of God and standing up for what we believe. Because if we abandon what we believe in order for what society is criticizing, then when they come for us, there'll be no one left to speak. Please, not the Pharisees, but the faithful. Thanks for being with us, and may God bless you. Mm -hmm.